My name is Captain Ashley Kessler. I'm on the teaching staff at San Jacinto College, the Maritime Technology and Training Center campus in Houston, Texas. This video is on manual tuning for radar and ARPA. Our objectives for tuning the radar and the ARPA at the end of this video, you will be able to explain the eight-step process for manually tuning a radar. I read a lot of court cases, and in today's society, we are so overloaded with so much electronics on our vessels, this admiralty judge at the end of one of his rulings, Justice Karn, even back in 1967, quoted, it is on men that safety at sea depends, and they cannot make a greater mistake than suppose that machines can do all the work for them. Obviously, before we use a radar, we have to turn it on. So when you turn on the radar, it's going to go through its boot up cycle, just like a computer. If there's any error messages, tell the captain. The 2004 International Maritime Organization radar and ARPA requirements state that from a code start to full run, has to take no more than four minutes. Then from standby to full transmit, no more than five seconds. So here's the eight steps to manually tuning a radar. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pick a rain scale. I'll talk about each one of these after I'm done with this particular slide right here. Second, we're going to turn off the suppressions, anything that affects the picture on your screen or the performance of the radar. We're going to turn up the brilliance or the intensity of the radar. We're going to turn the gain up pretty high. Then we can finally tune it. We can get our tuning button and we can adjust the tune. Then we're going to get the gain back to a manual level so we can see all of our contacts on the radar scope. We can adjust the brilliance so for whatever the conditions are on the bridge, we can still effectively see the radar. Then for whatever the prevailing circumstances are and conditions, you can add any of your suppressions after that. Step one, we have to select the rain scale. In the older model radars, in the operator manual, it would tell you how to manually tune the radar. It would tell you what rain scales work really well with manually tuning the radar. Modern radar operator manuals do not have that. They just say hit auto-tune. Don't get me wrong, auto-tune works very well. But in this presentation, we're talking about manually tuning the radar. So in these old radar books, it said that the 6 and the 12 nautical mile scale worked very well for tuning the radars. It may be difficult to tune your radar at the dock if you have a lot of ships around you and a lot of interference. Step two, we're going to turn off all the suppressions. This affects the performance of the radar or the ARPA or the picture quality we're seeing on our radar scopes. So there's a whole bunch of these that are radar suppressions or ARPA suppressions. One is our sensitive time control. They're sea clutter, not a very powerful suppression. We have our fast time constant, our rain clutter, which is a very powerful suppression. Our interference rejection, or IR, is also a very powerful suppression. We have our tuning bar. We have our gain feature. We have echo enhancement, or echo stretch, or video stretch. There's different names for this. 
and anything auto, auto tune or auto clutter must be turned down or off. Tuning a radar requires a bright screen, so we need to increase this brilliance. If you're on the midnight, the 0400 watch, it may affect your night vision, but you need a bright screen to tune this radar. Step four is increasing the gain. Gain is the sensitivity of the radar. But I like to think of gain as noise. If I have too much noise, I can't hear my contacts. If I don't have enough gain, I cannot pick up the weak or the very fast targets. So you got to have a pretty good balance of this gain. In this step four, we're going to increase the gain and get a pretty good saturation of dots on the radar scope. Step five, we're going to adjust the tuning bar. Whether you still have a knob or you have a mouse or you have a joystick, you want to get this tuning bar and adjust it as far as you can get it. If you can't fill that whole little box up, it's okay. You want to get your maximum tune. What happens if you tune it, keep tuning it, it will fall out and then it will fall back down again. So you want to get that maximum tune now your radar is tuned. Step six, we want to readjust this gain. Most people lower the gain until all the gain is gone. You need to leave a little speckled background on there. You need enough noise to be able to hear those weak targets and those fast targets. If you don't have enough noise, you can't hear your targets. So you need enough gain, a speckled background to hear those targets. Step seven, you can finally adjust the brilliance to your comfort level for, for whatever the lighting conditions are on the bridge of the ship at this time. In the final step, we can now add any needed suppressions for the prevailing existing conditions that we are encountering at this time. So some of these suppressions, again, they could be your sensitive time control, your sea clutter, your fast time constant, your rain clutter, your interference rejection. But wrong settings give wrong images. I have my radar students ask, and ARPA students ask me, what's a perfect radar picture? And I tell them, I don't know. I say, if you're seeing what you want to see on that radar, if you're seeing what you need to see on the radar, you have a good radar picture and you're tuned. If you're not seeing what, you're, what you want to see or what you need to see, your radar is not tuned. So wrong settings give wrong images. So our objective for this radar tuning, in this video, we explained the eight stop process to manually tune the radar. And there are the eight steps. You select the proper rain scale, you turn off your suppressions, you increase your brilliance, increase the gain, adjust your tuning bar, readjust your gain to a light speckle, readjust your brilliance, and any suppressions for the prevailing conditions that you need to put onto the radar. If you have any questions or comments about this video, you may contact me at my campus email, ashley.kessler at sjcd.edu.